And joining us here on India Today is former ISRO scientist Mr. Nambi Narayanan. Uh, Mr. Nambi Narayanan, Namaskaram. Thank you so much for joining us here on India Today. So you've been a part of this amazing journey of India space reform. So I'm sure you must be particularly proud, particularly excited and a bit nervous about the launch today, sir. Actually, I am not nervous today. Okay. Maybe I may become a little tensed up on the 23rd of August or 24th of August uh, when you are really landing or try to land on the moon. Because today, uh, honestly, you know, it is nothing but a, a GSLV launch, so which we are used to and uh, so, you know, so real tension will come only on the August uh, 23rd when, when you are trying to land on the on the moon but it was a uh, naturally you know this is leading to that so <laughs> to that extent you can be little little tensed up but how how proud yeah. are you sir how proud are you that we've reached this moment where we're talking about a soft landing on the moon yeah really it is not only me uh, everybody is proud i am surprised or i am interest uh, it is happy to note that the entire nation is now uh, anxious to know the result of this and everybody, particularly the children, uh, they are all glued to the television <laughs> and everybody is talking about Chandra and 3 and uh, very interesting. It only shows the kind of confidence uh, which the people have in ISRO and uh, well, it is our own, ISRO's own speciality. Uh, they may fail at the times, but uh, they immediately bounce back Very true. Uh, after analyzing the reasons for the failure and uh, correcting it. Yeah, I have seen this many times in my... I, I, I don't know whether it is appropriate, but let me tell you, when I was doing yes. the uh, full-scale flight version of the Vikas engine, hmm. uh, we had a failure. We, the, the whole thing stopped at 53 seconds for... No well explainable reason. We were upset. Uh, I was upset. I was I was hundred percent sure that this will go successful, but then it happened. So how we solved the problem and how we went through that mill, even it really you know makes me happy. And we solved it in two and a half days. We we solved the problem in two and a half days. Here we have an example of Chandrayaan two, mm. and as Cicero chairman was uh, telling. It is a failure-based analysis. It is a failure-based corrections. So we failed and from the failure we learned something. From the learnings we corrected something. And from the corrections we are going with confidence for this Chandra entry. That's uh, as a, again as, you, as usual <laughs> we will succeed. Generally we will succeed in this matter. You know, that's a question I think every Indian right now has sir, uh, about uh, Chandrayaan 2, the lessons we've learned from that in this particular mission. If you could just explain it to us, sir, the difference between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3. What have you really changed or tweaked to ensure this one is a success where Chandrayaan 2 failed? I'd call it a partial failure, sir. Well, uh, I... Okay, I don't think I'll take larger, uh, I mean, long time, but I'll sure. try to tell you. Uh, you see, we always had difficulties with respect to particularly missions like Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan. We had difficulty in our uh, payload carrying capability. Hmm. We have uh, a limitation on that. For example, today's, uh, today's uh, launch vehicle has a capability of 3,900 and something. Yes kilograms and uh, that is after improving uh, certain things in the whole thing. So we were struggling to keep the four tons and we had this difficulty because of our limitation in the launch vehicle. Hmm. Uh, so that was one difficulty so which made us on the Chandra in two to make some compromises which are not just uh, at random. We know that we have to restrict ourselves to certain weight which would mean that uh, we make some compromise and uh, that way we, we that, that is one problem. Second problem is we had made a fundamental problem in the algorithm of uh, the software part of the mission. 
Okay. Uh, they had some contradictory commands, which we didn't notice it. And you know, in space, this happens. Uh, most obvious, you will miss. <laughs> it will be so obvious. Uh, you know, we have a check, counter check, and uh, counter counter check, all kinds of things. But still, it is like you know, you you keep counting. Uh, let us say currency, uh, 100 rupees, you will keep the same mistake. Uh, it will count 99 and then you will not understand what the, where, where you have made a mistake. But actually it will be 100. <laughs> so like that in space also you have problems of that nature. Most obvious things you will lose. That is what has happened in the software. Then on the hardware we had some problem with respect to the uh, stability of the system which was landing. Now, these are the major two things which we corrected it in the Chandra entry, which was very easy to correct. Uh, but we fortunately had the orbiter, which was still uh, circling on the lunar orbit, hmm. which we can make use of for another two, three years. That help, helped us to get away from the orbiter. You don't need the orbiter for this mission, which would mean that we can enhance the payload weight a little bit uh, more that the lander and uh, this one Vikram weight. So that way we have made some stability uh, better margins. So we are actually you will appreciate that we use the uh, we change our failures also <laughs> into successes we, we, because we learn something and that's amazing. Uh, in South Pole we learned quite a bit on that so we yeah, so this is ISRO's own speciality. You know, in this uh, particular mission, so, uh, sometimes you may, you may be. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were telling me something. This no, so I, I, I also wanted to know, sir, the Chandrayaan 3 mission, how does it really help our, uh, you know, in our space missions and our space reform going forward? No, actually, uh, you see, what does it mean in, in case if you, uh, if you really succeed, what does it mean? It only shows your ability to reach the moon by soft landing, which you failed during the Chandrayaan 2. Hmm. It only shows your technical superiority over the, over the job, so which will be not only a national pride, of course, it will inspire the younger generations, as I see it. Everybody is glued to the television here. Yeah. And uh, in the international scenario, you will be looked upon. Okay, uh, you know, we are going to be one among the four nations, Russia, China, and uh, USA. Or we will be the fourth nation who will be sending something to the moon. So your technical superiority is recognized and it is exhibited. Hmm. We should enable India or the foreign investors to invest more money in space missions, uh, particularly when this government has opened up the private participation in the Correct. Uh, in the space uh, missions. Also, you will agree. You will agree that uh, uh, this gives a uh, lot of. Con you see, we, we are exhibiting our confidence level in the whole thing. That's a whole, whole important point. Because there are three so, countries that have done it. USA, Russia and China. India will join a very special league. My final question to you, Mr. Nambi Narayana, not really a question, but what would be your message? I know all ISRO scientists right now would be very nervous. Your message to the current Chandrayaan-3, the Chandrayaan mission team, to ISRO chief, Mr. Somanath. It is not only to Chandrayaan mission, but I have a small dream which I want to share it uh, with you in this Please. occasion. Uh, like what you have in, uh, in USA, you have a NASA and uh, for the Europeans you have an ESA. I wish to have an ESA, Asian Space Agency for this region, which would mean that uh, tomorrow all the space missions which are expensive uh, can be tackled by collaboration among these three agencies, namely ESA, NASA and ESA. So I feel it may look a little sort of uh, difficult, but if the government wants to take the initiative, they can take the initiative. You have so many small, small countries like you have uh, Sri Lanka, you have Malay Islands, you have Vietnam, you have Thailand, 
you know, so many countries, plus you have Gulf nations who can join you. Yeah. And even Japan will join you if you take the initiative. So I feel that it is time to form an ESA, ESA, ESA which will help to at least pool the funds you want. This is one point. Hmm. I am not saying this is a message. I am saying this is a desire. It can, it can, it can help in the long It's an run. amazing, it's but an as amazing a message, vision. I am saying sure, that sir. as usual, <laughs> yeah, um, all, all visions are amazing. When I remember when Kalam was making his 75 millimeter diameter rocket, 75 millimeter, three inches diameter rocket, mm -hmm. which he called it as D1, uh, sorry, D2. Then I asked him, what is, where is D1? He said, no, we give an impression there is a D1, but this D stands for dreamer. That <laughs> was his uh, uh, rocket, which we later renamed as Menaga. And uh, of course, Menaga was only dancing in the air and it never reached its target. But and I can say this, we have I to can say this, the Mr. Nambinarayanan, because you have visions, because you have dreams, you've inspired so many of us to look up to the skies and as you said, glued to the television screens today with a vision for India and our space journey. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here on India Today. Uh, we've all got our fingers crossed and I'm sure today will be successful. I'm sure 40 days from now, while we'll all be a bit nervous, ISRO would have achieved what we're all hoping for. Thank you very much, Mr. Nambinarayanan. Th 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 thank you, Ashida. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Take care of yourself. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have a great day forward. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.